Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to be breaking down central netting. Now, before I get into that, just a reminder, you can find me on Twitter. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. You can find all my videos and blogs on my website, which is infosecforhumans.com. And also you should subscribe here for my latest and greatest. So let me give you a high level overview of the way I see this video going. Uh, we're going to define some terms that I consider to be crucial to understand the central netting discussion. Uh, then we're going to talk about why you might want a central net, and then I'll show you some high-level configuration steps to start playing around with central netting. So numero uno, number one, static source netting. This is uh, how most people are introduced to netting. This is what most people learn what netting is. Uh, with the FortiGates, we define it as stortic, static source netting, uh, not stortic, whatever that might be. Um, and basically what this is, is you've got a single public IP address, You've got tens, uh, hundreds, or thousands of internal private IP addresses. You then, uh, or the FortiGate then does port address translation. And if you don't know what that is, hit pause right now. Go out and Google it, PAT, port address translation. Um, the FortiGate does port address translation for those multiple internal private IP addresses using that single internet or public IP address. And that's how you can, you can uh, translate from thousands of internal IP addresses out to the internet using one single IP address. And again, that's called static source netting. So the next term you need to know, number two, is dynamic source netting. Now dynamic source netting is similar to static source netting, except for instead of having one public IP address, you now have many public IP addresses, or you have a pool of IP addresses, and that's where this term comes in, the IP pool. An IP pool is an object within FortiGate. You have to define it just like you would a service object or a firewall object. You define an IP pool object and it's going to be a range. It's going to be a subnet, you know, probably a slash 28 or slash 29, but it could be anything. It depends on how large your organization is on uh, the ISP that you're dealing with. But, you know, most are going to be like a slash 27, slash 28, slash 29. So you're going to have six, eight, 10, 12 usable IP addresses on the internet. You take those usable IP addresses, you consolidate them into this pool. And then when you create your firewall policy and you create your netting policy for that firewall policy, you then select dynamic IP pool and you select the pool of addresses. And what this does is it says, as an internal IP address needs to connect to the internet, or you know, that's the example here, it needs to connect outbound from where it's at now using this firewall policy, it will use the next available public IP address in that dynamic IP pool. Now the thing to realize here is, is you can't control what port it's using, either internal or external. It's just grabbing the IP address and going out. There's no control over the port. So that's a pretty good segue into number three. The reason we're here and what we're talking about is central source netting. With central source netting, you are taking the net configuration out of the firewall policy, which is the default behavior for FortiGate. You configure firewall policy and in that policy, you configure the netting for the objects that are using that firewall policy. You are removing that from the firewall policy and you are configuring netting in a separate area, similar to how you configure your firewall policies. The other key part to remember here is, is uh, with dynamic IP pools, we were mapping, uh, you know, internal IP addresses to a, a pool of available external IP addresses. But if you remember, we can't select or control how the port is mapped. With central netting, we have very granular control and we can control how that port, external port is mapped to the internal IP addresses. Now also keep in mind, we're only talking about internal going out. This is not destination NAT or DNAT or VIPing. Uh, this is only concerned about uh, traffic originating from inside the firewall, leaving the firewall. So before we move on uh, and we get into the whys, you you know the question why you would do this, uh, there are a few bullet points here I want to hit on. Uh, the biggest one is central NAT is not enabled by default. When you fire up your FortiGate for the first time, your VM, um, you have policy-based netting. So in order to use central netting, you need to go into the command line, and I'll show you how to do that before the end of this video. Uh, the other key component here is, is if central NAT's enabled, you can no longer configure netting under the firewall policies. It seems like a no-brainer, but they do call it out here because uh, you could walk into an environment. Maybe you're the new guy or new gal. You walk in, you sit down, and you log in, and you're used to managing FortiGates, uh, and you go and take a look at the policies, and you see, hey, there's nowhere to configure netting here. That will tell you this organization is using central netting. And then the very last bullet point, it tells you, the central source net window contains a table of all central source net policies. Again, it's just saying 
all your netting will be in one place once you enable central netting. A, kind of a no-brainer. All right, now onto the million dollar question, why we're here. Why would you wanna use central netting? Um, there's two reasons that, I, that come to mind often when I have this discussion with somebody. Uh, number one is the granularity of control. You have really, really granular control over the public IP and the port, the public port IP address space. But I think the main reason is, uh, and this is just me going on a limb, not officially from Fortinet or anybody like that. This is just my assumption. Uh, central netting exists as a add-on feature, as like a, a feature you can enable after because it's not enabled by default. It exists to make it easier for uh, people who are used to working on uh, Palo Alto, Cisco, Checkpoint, makes it easier for them to walk into FortiGate because those firewalls and probably some others, that's how they do netting by default. They don't use policies. Uh, they don't have netting in the firewall policy. They have what is basically central netting. So when we convert from like a Checkpoint or a Palo Alto to a FortiGate, um, and, and the engineering team is used to working on those devices and they're new to FortiGate, they don't have any experience, it's one less hurdle for them to overcome by being able to say, okay, I know that um, central netting, I have a general idea how that works, so let's continue doing that on the FortiGate. Okay, so enough of the blabbing. Let me log into, um, blow this up a little bit here. Yeah, it didn't shut down all that well. I'm going to do that later. Uh, I logged into one of my FortiGate VMs here and... Uh, looks like I got ahead of myself a little bit. Let me disable that. Config sys settings. Uh, set central net. Disable. I'm going to end that to write it to memory. So refresh. I go back to policy and objects. You can see this is the default behavior for FortiGate. You fire it up. You turn it on. You've got your firewall policies. You got your DOS policies, denial of service, address, internet services, database, blah, 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 blah. You don't have a central net configuration table here under policies and objects. Meaning, when you go in here and you define your firewall policies, you have this firewall network options category, and then you have netting. And you can either turn it on or you can turn it off. Um, you know, I had somebody ask me, why would you want to turn off netting? If your firewall is the head end for your internal uh, segments, you don't want a net between your internal subnets. You just turn it off, but you still want to be able to apply the, the next gen firewall features. Uh, this is how you do it. You turn netting off and you just make it your default gateway for your subnets. But that's a whole nother video. Uh, turning netting back on, you can see we can tell it to use the outgoing interface, meaning the IP address assigned to this interface, or getting back to those dynamic pools we talked about, you can select a dynamic pool here. Um, since we're, we're making a video on central netting, this is a default configuration FortiGate firewall. You need to go to the command line, hit that little carrot up there with the underscore. And here we're going to do config sys settings. And then once we're here, we're going to set central net, tab that out, enable. We hit end to write it and close this window. And then at this point, we don't need to reboot the firewall. We just need to refresh the interface. We now have an additional menu item over here, central source net. And in here, we can create new. And it's, it's very similar to the... Uh, process of creating policies on the FortiGate. You select an incoming interface, you select the outgoing, you can specify multiple source addresses, a subnet, a single source address, however you want to do it. Uh, again, you can specify the same kind of parameters for a destination address, and you can tell it here, NAT or no NAT, use your outgoing interface, dynamic pool, and you see you have a few more options down here. You can, you can limit to a protocol, and if those aren't here, then you can specify based on protocol number. Um, you can do your explicit port mapping. I'm not going to get into these more fine-tuned details. The purpose of this video is more of an introduction and a high-level overview of the how and why. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Once you have, you know what, let's go ahead and make one. Uh, I think it's important to see. So port 1, port 2, that will just say all source addresses. And we only care about it going to gmail.com. We're going to leave this at default. We're going to enable that policy. So now we have this central source net record with the central source net policy here saying any address coming in from port one, leaving port two, let's say port one is the internal segment, port two is our WAN interface, going to gmail.com, we can then create a firewall policy for it. We're going to say port one, leaving port two, our source is all, 
destination is Gmail. We're gonna leave that all by default. And then you can see here, central NAT is enabled. So NAT settings from matching central source NAT policies will be applied. If you remember from the other part, uh, I think I can jump over here. Nope, that's got central NAT too. There were some setting options here that are no longer available. And this is what I was calling out with that bullet point in the notes. Uh, you can configure your next gen features down here, but then you click OK and you save it. And if it catches up, boy, is it taking its sweet time today. Sooner or later, it's going to write it. We're going to say OK. Oh, wait a second. Derp. Nope. It's never the firewall. It's always the human. There we go. So that's a great example. If you notice up here, NAT is listed as custom. It tells you um, you're using IP pool configuration, which is interesting that it doesn't call out you're using central NAT. But if you wanted to change the behavior of NATing, you can't do it in the firewall policy anymore. You're going to have to go to central NAT. And again, uh, let me blow up my, my big, beautiful face here. And again, if... Um, it was unclear beforehand. The, the key takeaways here, and this isn't really on the NSE4, so I'm gonna throw this under my things you should know category of Fortinet, Fortigate uh, videos. Uh, the key takeaways here are, I believe that, it, that, that central netting exists on a Fortigate to make it easier to walk into from a Palo Alto, from a Cisco, from a checkpoint, uh, or if you need super fine-tuned granular control over your netting processes internally. That's the reasons why, uh, and then again, keep in mind, central netting is not enabled by default. You need to go into the command line, use that configuration command that I showed you, and then come back in, refresh the FortiGate. You don't need to reboot it. Uh, and that's, that's about all. I mean, that's pretty good for a high level overview. Uh, let me know in the comments below if this was able to help you. Uh, this was made for someone specifically that requested it, but I think everyone else can benefit from this uh, quick high level uh, re review as well. And again, if you're still with me, thanks for hanging on. This has been a long video by my standards. Uh, you can follow me here. I would appreciate some subs. It lets me know that I'm on the right path and I'm making high quality videos. Let me know in the comments below if you had any questions coming out of this. And again, my name's Chris Ray. With this channel here, InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career.